Welcome back to our series on the Cybersecurity Incident Response Playbook published by the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency or CISA. This is part two of an eight part video series over this playbook and each episode will cover a different phase or step of the playbook as we go through. If you haven't seen the first episode, the overview of the incident response playbook, it introduces you to who CISA is and what the playbook is hoping to accomplish. So if you haven't watched that, check it out. We will now jump into part, we will now jump into episode two, where we cover the preparation phase of the playbook. This is the flowchart of the incident response portion of the incident response and vulnerability playbook. So the preparation portion of the flow is these green portions of the flowchart. One thing to notice is that this phase of the playbook happens before an incident happens. These are things that an agency needs to have ready, needs to have done prior to an incident to be in compliance with this playbook. And it's kind of in the name, right, with preparation. Preparation happens before the event occurs. So what are we hoping to accomplish in the preparation phase? We want to establish a baseline of what is normal within our network. And that includes a bunch of different things. What is normal for a person or department to have access to? What is normal network traffic? What are normal applications and services that are going to be running on our network? Those types of things. That way, when something not normal or out of band happens, we can easily or at least more easily identify those events and hopefully detect breaches or incidents earlier in their process. We need to have documentation and it needs to be detailed both in policies, procedures, and personnel. So the three Ps of documentation, policies, procedures, and personnel, and what the roles are and what needs to happen during a breach. This needs to be written. This also needs to be available for people to have access to. The preparation phase also deals with education and training. Of course, we need to be training our people. I know that sometimes freeing up budget for training can be difficult. However, it is super important with the rate at which vulnerabilities are being found, breaches are happening, and bad actors are educating themselves and staying at the edge of technology. We on the defense also need to be doing the same. Of course, we need to have our equipment tested, updated, and calibrated. There would be nothing worse than having a breach thinking you have the right equipment and it's not working correctly. So when we talk about policies and procedures, what are some of the things that we need to take into account? First, team hierarchy. When a breach happens is not the time to decide who's in charge and who has what roles. Someone should be designated as the coordination lead or incident manager. When a breach occurs, they would direct the activities of the recovery and incident response plan. We need to have policies and procedures that lay out how to escalate issues as well as cross department reporting. This is a problem in a lot of agencies where we get siloed between the different departments, but bad actors don't care about your siloing, don't care about your inner agency politics. This needs to be clearly documented so that there's no questions and so that things like politics and and personal things don't enter into the process in the heat of the moment. We just follow policy, follow what is documented so that we can escalate and coordinate with our other departments quickly, easily, and effectively. We also need contingency plans so that we have at least something written down, something planned if things go in other directions. Take time to write out policies and procedures for even fringe events, even if you may not reference them every time, they may not happen often, it would be better to have those documented and not need it than need it and not have it documented. An important part that is often overlooked is you need a policy and procedure on how to notify and interact and collect evidence if you have to deal with and interface with law enforcement. Make sure that you have a forensic solution such as FTK, FTK Enterprise, FTK Connect that can collect data from your network 
in a forensically sound manner. So if you need to submit that information to law enforcement for criminal proceedings, everything in the chain of custody is correct and everything is admissible. Moving on to infrastructure auditing. This is super important, not just for the playbook, but this is pulled directly from Zero Trust in the executive order 14028 that just came out earlier this year in 2022. You need to maintain an accurate picture of your infrastructure. This includes your endpoints that the users are interacting with, your networks, what's connected to what, what resources are connected to what network, IP maps, all that sort of thing. What are your cloud platforms and resources, software that you're using? And then, of course, if you use contractors or third-party resources, you need to know what is happening there. This is explicitly dictated within Zero Trust and re-emphasized in the executive order. So, of course, it is included here in the playbook almost word for word if you were to go in and reference it. In addition to maintaining an accurate picture, you do need to be able to respond to those devices as per zero trust. So things like the FTK enterprise agent, which can remediate, collect, and even preview on any box that the agent is there will allow you to do both of these with one solution. You need to actively monitor the resources on the network, of course, using antivirus, endpoint detection and response, data loss prevention. You can use packet capture, so on and so forth for monitoring all network activity. Remember that you should have a basic picture of what is normal for your network traffic. That way you can identify if things are not going right. If you've been following the news over the last couple of years, you know there's been some high profile breaches where terabytes and terabytes of data have been leached out of networks. And this indicates that a normal level of network traffic was not known, otherwise they would have identified the large surge of data exiting their network. Of course, we should be logging this includes retention and management. We need to have policies and procedures around how we're logging, how long we hold those logs and where we store those logs, etc. Next, we need to stay up to date with our cyber threat intelligence. From the playbook, it says actively monitor intelligence feeds for threat or vulnerability advisories from government, trusted partners, open sources, and commercial entities. Again, this plays a big part with training. We'll talk about training next as well but you need to stay up to date on what is what in the industry. What are the new breaches? What are the new technologies? What are the new methodologies that are being used to cause problems? One of the big aspects of the CISA playbook is communication. We'll talk about that here at the end of this section, but communicate, communicate, communicate with other agencies. Exchange information that, of course, is not going to risk your data, your work, but that can help everyone in their protections against breaches. You want to integrate intelligence into your source, seam, and forensic solutions to help maintain your defensive structure. These can include atomic indicators. So we know that a hacking group comes from this IP or this area of the world. However, just be aware that as people learn that they've been added to a list, they can always change this information. We have computed indicators such as YAR rules, regular expressions, and other detection abilities in our forensic tools and SOAR and SEAM solutions that can run scans across endpoints, networks, and resources to scan for these vulnerabilities. And then of course, patterns and behaviors. We need to know what techniques and technologies are being used by bad actors so that we can identify them if they start happening within our network. Coming back to the baseline point of preparation, identify what is normal within your network so you can identify more easily what is not. If you don't know what normal patterns or behaviors are within your network, you're not going to be able to identify the things that are not. The playbook specifies that you need to establish a means for collecting data evidence using digital forensic methodology. This, of course, is for defensibility and admissibility in court, also for general preservation. Forensics is very good at preserving things at the bit level. Using things like FTK or FTK Enterprise, you can collect from Linux, Apple, or Mac forensically sound across the network, even while in the process of remediation. So you want to have a methodology outlined and ready to go before a breach happens. 
training. You need to make sure that your team is trained. I understand that sometimes getting training budget is difficult, but per the playbook, per the mandate, ensure that personnel are trained, exercise, and ready to respond to cybersecurity incidents. Run practices. Conduct recovery exercises to test full organizational continuity. This needs to include cross-department. We talked about getting rid of that siloing in your preparation phase using policies and procedures. Train to that. Have multi-department training. This is time. This is budget. But it's insurance against a breach and can help minimize your risk. Lastly, communication. This is the big part of the playbook. CISA really wants you to focus on cross-agency and local communication. So both inside your organization as well as with other agencies. This needs to start happening better. CISA is there to help coordinate those reports and communicate those to other agencies so that each agency can learn from the events of another agency so that they don't fall victim to the same breaches, incidents, techniques, technologies, etc. Also, we should be working with third parties to learn about cyber threat intelligence. Again, coming back to that education, we need to know what's out there. We need to be communicating. We need to be sharing our knowledge. This is a direct quote from the playbook. Sharing cyber threat intelligence is a critical element of preparation. We need to stop siloing. We need to stop hoarding our information and share the stuff that we've learned. We can share what we've learned among our agencies without giving up critical information, without increasing our risk. Just, hey, these are the signatures that we found. These are the methodologies. These are the behaviors. These are the IP ranges that we were attacked from. Make sure that you have these in your lists, those types of things. Use CISA to coordinate this communication. And of course, we're talking about federal civilian executive branches and the departments of, you know, so on and so forth. So make sure that you have policies and have prepared for how to handle classified information and data. Again, you don't want to share this if at all possible. However, if it becomes necessary, make sure that redaction policies, access policies, all that stuff is documented in the event of a breach and by extension, minimizing your risk of accidentally releasing classified information, which would be pretty ironic if you were to do that in the protection of a data breach. So make sure that you are documenting and have a plan for that. Okay. Those points are an overview of the preparation phase of the CISA incident response playbook. Again, this should be happening before the breach. Of course, as breaches happen, this will adjust the way that you prepare for the next one. These documents, procedures, plans, hierarchies, training should be an ever evolving process based on the cyber threat intelligent landscape at the time. For more information, you can reference the Incident and Vulnerability Response Playbook published by CISA. It will go into greater detail than what we've covered today, but these are the high points and these are the important aspects of the preparation phase. Next week, we'll be moving on to the detection and analysis phase, and we'll be jumping into that and why it's important and how you can apply it to your agency to protect and react appropriately to breaches. Thanks for watching this week, and then we'll see you again next week.